Hi, and welcome to another episode of Web Series Showcase, where we highlight exceptional web series from all over the world, taking you behind the scenes and on set with the stars of the new digital age. I'm Brian Thompson. And I'm Andreina Santander. Today's episode is brought to you by Miami Webfest. Experience new media in a new way. And by Latino Webfest, fiesta, arte y oportunidad. What if you could take the most interesting, complicated, and funny moments of your life and then watch someone else live them on screen. Well, that's exactly what happens when many screenwriters put pen to paper designing their next awesome script. It paid off big time for Sally Hassan, director and producer of Ghetto Nerd Girl, winner of the first ever People's Choice Award at the Miami Web Fest. This series is fun to watch, has great acting, and just plain good storytelling. Let's go behind the scenes with Ghetto Nerd Girl. Hi, my name is Sally Hassan, and I'm the creator of Get Over Girl. Girl. Woo! And I'm Melissa Adamas. I play Susan. I'm Megan McGowan. I play Leah. Roland Keller. I play Chase. Get on Nerd Girl is a web series about a teen girl who doesn't fit in with her uh, girl clique, so she decides to leave them to find new friends. Um, in the process, we follow her as she meets shady characters, cute boys that she crushes on easily, and she finds herself and her voice and who she really is. The main challenge that I faced was during the writing. Uh, revealing specific things for my past. Uh, everything that happens on the show is based off of my personal experiences and at times it's difficult to share um, certain events but uh, as we progress in the series I notice that our audience is very uh, receptive where they're either uh, relating to the content or they feel inspired by uh, what, what the story is actually about, which helps me to share more as we go on with the series. Um, I definitely think that Susan is a sassy character. She definitely has a spunky side to her. She is not afraid to show it. <laughs> um, and I think at a young age that she is, um, as a young adult, that she is very courageous because she knows that she is better, that she can do better for herself than, you know, than her life around her. Um, so she definitely takes that courage in, like, um, breaking that cord with her, with her friends, her clique of girlfriends, you know, to take that next step. And I, you know, at that age, you know, you don't really know what you want, and it's something that we all feel, you know, that is just, how do I express myself in that sense? And she is willing to try and reach for that. She does do it, and she's definitely a decision maker because she wants to go for that goal, that dream. It's kind of funny because when I'm not playing Susan, I do take away her sassiness, um, and I have to, you know, step away from that. And, and it's just, it's just funny because I'm like, wait, I can't say this <laughs> to people. I can't say that type of attitude, <laughs> you know. Um, but Susan is a character, and I appreciate playing her. I decided to make a web series because it's actually the perfect medium for the story that we're trying to tell. Um, our episodes are between uh, six and seven minutes. Um, with the first episode, we were able to introduce the characters, uh, set the storyline, and it works with our budget. Um, we did the first... Uh, three to four episodes within a year, a year and a half. Um, I also wanted a medium where people could become attached to the characters and really feel for them when uh, certain uh, drastic things happen to them. I can relate because I think anyone in high school, um, 
especially girls, uh, kind of wanted to fit in. You don't want to be an outcast. You need to have that group of friends, not only for support, but especially in high school, it was all about popularity. So I can see how, how she'd want to be, you know, changing herself just to belong. In a way, like, I compare to that, I relate to that, but at the same time, I, I differ because I didn't follow the popular crowd necessarily. I didn't change who I was. I had a group of friends, but I stayed true to myself. And I don't think my character does that. I think she follows a group so much that she kind of loses herself that she's not true to who she is. Mostly when you see her originally, you're going to think that she's a bitch because um, she's, she's a follower. She is in this group of girls and they are pretty bitchy. That's kind of like a, a little bit of a weakness of, of hers because she it, she's following. She doesn't lead. Um, she's not necessarily thinking for herself and everyone's beck and call. She doesn't do what she wants for herself. I am Chase, big beautiful butterfly. He's, he's that rock that Susan leans on, and in my personal life, that's usually how it ends up with me. Everybody comes to me with their problems, and I'm the listener, and then I give the advice and um, figure out where to go from there. And Chase is very much that person as well. When I think of Chase, I think of uh, this little caterpillar who's going to go into his cocoon all nice and warm, and then one day he's going to break out and be this big, beautiful butterfly that we all can see the potential in. And he's very much an enigma, enigma really, because um, he's very introverted, but at the same time, he wants to be an extrovert. He wants to be out there. He wants to be uh, almost like the center of attention, but at the same time, he wants to curl up into a little ball and be safe. He doesn't want to talk to people. And that's what the character Susan brings out in him. She brings out that flavor. She brings out that personality in him. Almost every single time you see Chase in the beginning, He's always in his room. That's his safe haven. That's his cocoon. What we think is the damsel in distress, Susan, is really going to be the heroine. She's the one who's going to pull him out of his cocoon and break him out of his shell into this beautiful butterfly. Our target market starts from high school students to uh, guys and girls in their early 20s to late 20s. Uh, the different issues that we cover on our show are either what teens are going through now or what uh, young 20-somethings have gone through and possibly still be going through, whether it's uh, finding themselves, dealing with drugs and alcohol, peer pressure, relationships. Um, those are the main uh, elements that we deal with in our show. We have over 300 likes on Facebook. We have 90 followers on Twitter. And we have 80 subscribers on YouTube. We've also been featured in Web V Guide. They did a review on us. Um, they do everything web series on their site. We've had another review on Creative Spotlights. Um, they interviewed Melissa and myself. And we've also been a guest on Super Geeked Up, which is a weekly online show that talks about different uh, geeky pop culture with web series creators. And I've also been interviewed on What Women Entrepreneurs Want with Joe Corbalis on uh, Blog Talk Radio. And uh, within the festival circuit, uh, we won a few awards. At Miami Web Fest, we won People's Choice for 2014. At ATL Web Fest, we won Viewer's Choice for 2014. And at NYC WebFest, we were nominated for Best Actress. Our lead, Melissa Damas, was nominated. Hey guys, thank you for uh, supporting us and watching our episodes. And we can't wait to bring you guys more episodes coming up soon. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, and check us out on Twitter at Ghetto Nerd Girl. Nerdy by nature. Ghetto by design. What? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> thank you for watching another episode of Web Series Showcase. We look forward to seeing you again next time. I'll leave you with the words of Amit Kalantri. People never forget two things, their first love and the money they wasted watching a bad movie. Until next time.